With all the developments in Russia in the last few days, it feels like Secretary of State Blinken's trip to Beijing was weeks, not days ago. A small group of journalists, including myself, were granted short-term visas to report inside China, a rarity these days for American journalists. The record heat wave in Beijing added to the already charged atmosphere. In the five years since the last Secretary of State's visit, so much has changed. The severe COVID lockdowns are gone, but Beijing's economy hasn't yet recovered. American tech CEOs are back. President Xi Jinping dubbed Microsoft's Bill Gates as his first American friend to visit, perhaps a reflection of his concern about the state of the world's second largest economy. Xi's face to face with Mr. Blinken was less cordial. He brushed off the U.S. request to permit even a phone call between the top military chiefs of these two nuclear powers. Welcome to China. On the softer side of diplomacy, there were small victories. A vague pledge by China to cut back on the flow of the deadly drug fentanyl and to consider restarting direct commercial flights, something I came to appreciate on my way home. At the airport in Beijing, in the lounge, waiting for my flight at 2.30 a.m. It's going to take nearly a day for me to get home because those direct flights that used to be so frequent between Washington and Beijing have stopped. They don't exist anymore. The difficulty of simply connecting seems symbolic of so much. Healthcare CEO Roberta Lipson has been living in China for 40 years and worries that the two countries are losing the ability to understand each other. I think less and less American students want to come because of all of the bad press that we have about China. And that gives me cause for concern because it means that in 10 years, we won't have a cadre of experts that understand China. Adding to that risk, political heat in Washington about an increasingly assertive China. Ambassador Nick Burns is America's man in Beijing. Do you feel like it's the Cold War 2.0 and you're right in the middle of it? I think it's more complicated. We're dealing with a China that is not only a substantial military power, but is the second strongest economy in the world, highly innovated, very strong on science and technology and research and development. This is a harder problem set. I think it's a harder and more complicated problem, ultimately, than during the old Cold War. And China has enormous influence globally. We stand up for human freedom, religious freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, and obviously that's a big discussion and an argument that we have ongoing with the Chinese. And this competition will be with us for decades.